Hi, I'm R.G. Absher with Overmountain Victory Trail Association and Carrie Masaryk will be talking to you about spinning in the 18th century. Hi, my name is Miss Carrie and I don't know about you, but when I went outside this morning, I was cold and I was thinking about what kind of clothes I was going to put on. Did I want to put on linen or cotton that kept my body really cool? Or did I want to put on wool or silk, cloth that kept my body really, really warm? So I decided to put on some wool to keep my body really warm on this cold morning. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the wool process and how I made my own clothes. Here on the Carolina frontier, we didn't have stores to run off to to get our yarn or to purchase fabric, so we had to make it ourselves. So first thing we had to do was find our sheep. And this sheep is a English breed. It's called a Cotswold and we have to shear our sheep. This guy's name is Noah, and we have to shear our sheep and with a pair of trimmers like this. And sheep are just like us. We don't have to kill them to get their wool. We just cut their hair. So we're just giving them a haircut for, and so they're a lot cooler during the summertime. So that's really nice. So we shear them. And when we, after we shear them, this is what their wool looks like. It's really greasy, it's dirty, there's little bits of poop in it, it smells kind of bad, like a barnyard floor. And so I can't spin with this. This isn't very good yarn yet, so I have to wash it just like we wash our hair. So just like we wash our hair, I use warm water and soap to clean it. And after I wash it, it looks like this. Okay, so after I wash it, it's not sticky anymore. The fibers are coming apart. And it's really nice, but it's so tangly and I still can't use it. So like we comb our hair, I have to comb this wool. And if you all lived in my house with me, this would be part of your job as the children of the household, is to fluff up the wool, clean it, put it on my carters, and these are like our hair combs, and I'm gonna comb my fibers so they're all nice and straight. I get all the tangles out. No more tangles. And then, oops, this is what I can use. Look at how pretty all the fibers are in one direction. If there's any grass or leaves, those carters help get the grass and leaves out of the wool for me. Come everything really straight and nice. But I'm not done yet. This fiber is not very strong like this. so. If I twist this fiber here, by twisting it, I make it really strong and it won't break apart easily. So I have a couple tools that I use to help me put a twist in this yarn so I don't have to do it by hand. One tool is called a spindle. And this spindle, you twist the spindle and the spindle puts twist in my yarn. And I'm gonna show you how that works here. Let's see. So now, do you think this would take me a long time to make a big chunky yarn? It would take me a little bit of time. Get enough yarn to weave a hat or knit a hat, knit gloves, make socks. So somebody had a great idea. What if we attach a really big wheel to this spindle? And if we attach this really big wheel, it'll make this spindle go ton faster than I could do it just by hand. Really fast. So, 
If I were on the go, I would use the spindle. If I were at my home spinning, I could use this wheel. This wheel is called a great wheel, a high wheel, a walking wheel, a wool wheel. It has all sorts of names and it really makes my spinning go a little bit quicker if I'm right at home. So this is how it works. I'm going to spin my wheel and feed, give my wheel some twist. And it's twisting my yarn, my fiber to make it good and strong. And then my second step is I have to go in reverse and wind it on and keep on going. This has made spinning so much faster for me and I can produce quite a bit of yarn at nighttime if I'm stuck in the house or if it's rainy. And then from there, once I get this all full, I can take two balls of yarn and I can twist them around each other. Okay, and I can do that on my great wheel too. And here's a little piece of yarn where you can really see the twists going around each other. And by twisting that yarn, it makes your yarn even stronger. And so from there, I can knit or crochet or put my yarn on my loom and I can weave and make all sorts of pieces of clothing that would make us warm for winter time. Because again, we were making our own clothes to keep us warm. Um, here are some examples of things we might have worn. I've got woolen gloves. This jacket's made out of wool. My scarf is made out of wool. Here's some mitts and a little scarf that's made out of wool. All sorts of clothing, pieces of clothing. So that is how folks in the back country on the Carolina frontier, that's how they would make wool spin wool so that they could make some woolen clothing to keep themselves warm during the winter months.